Hey, today we're going to talk about the Banana Splits movie, and more or less why it's awesome. <laughs> so, I first heard about this a couple of months ago through Twitter or Facebook or somewhere. Like, I follow a lot of horror people, and somebody was really excited about it, so when it came out I was like, oh cool. Uh, like, I was excited, they got me excited for it too. Uh, however, it sort of felt like one of those movies that I could catch on sale if I waited. So, pretty much every time I went out, it was like, oh, is it on sale yet? And at last, at Best Buy this week, it was! So, uh, we're recording this on the 11th, so if you get out there, I think it might still be on sale. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow, or tonight if you're watching on October 12th, uh, Sci-Fi is playing this. And that's gonna be interesting, because... There's a lot of unbelievably graphic violence in this, and I'm really curious how they're going to cut that for TV. Because, uh, wow. So, I went into this with fairly high expectations. Like, I was expecting more of a, like, bizarre comedy kind of thing, and it definitely had funny moments. But, uh, wow. <laughs> the kills were unbelievably nasty. Like, I was, I was kind of stunned into silence a few times. Like, we're talking Sleepaway Camp 2 stuff, except with better quality effects and not as much needless torture. Uh, but anyway, so if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, so the premise of this movie is that there's this kid's show called The Banana Splits, and the, there are the, and the Banana Splits are these, like, animatronic kind of Five Nights at Freddy's dudes you see on the cover. And apparently it was a real variety show from like the 60s and 70s. And I had somehow never heard of that. <laughs> so it's like, what do you mean it's real? It's like, oh, so I, I kind of wonder if there's going to be, you know, usually I enjoy like stories like, oh, grandma bought this for, you know, her kids. And it's like, you know, Chucky because, you know, there was a doll on the cover. I genuinely hope that does not happen with this one, though, because a lot of the stuff in here is pretty extreme. Uh, but anyway, so our main character is this kid and his family. He loves the banana splits. He's going to, he gets this birthday present to go to a taping of the show, uh, and the show has been cancelled a few minutes before the show actually starts. And so the robots find that out, and they go crazy. Uh, so, and they become determined to make sure they always have an audience, and the show must go on. You know, by kidnapping children and savagely murdering any adults they run into. Which, uh, wow! I, I don't think I can really overemphasize just how nasty the kills in this really are. Like, we get... Oh, how much detail should I give? Should I keep it? Well, we get, we get like magic tricks, you know, like put somebody in the box, saw them in half. Uh, we get, you know, well, okay, this is going to be a little bit of a gripe of mine. So on the cover, we get this nasty looking axe. We don't actually see this axe. But its use has been strongly implied. <laughs> so, like, we get beheadings, we get hammers. Ah! I'm trying so hard not to say the spo- You know what? Spoiler alert! There's, like, one of the cooler ones is, like, somebody gets, like, a huge lollipop, like, rammed down their, their throat. Like, that was one of the craziest effects I've ever seen. Uh, you know, there are things with flame, like, shooting flames, and there's this wheel with, like, oh, man, it's, you know, if, if you like brutal violence, you'll probably be pretty happy with this. <laughs> uh, but so, anyway, that's just kind of the premise. Uh, so the plot moves along pretty fat, pretty fast, like, you're never really bored, like, it's fast-paced enough that there are... I didn't count how many kills there were, like, every minute or whatever, but there was enough to keep you pretty satisfied, plus there's, like, a big surprise near the end, where you kind of realize, 
oh, this is so much darker than I thought it was. Like, there's, there's a lot more gravity to the killings. Uh, and there's, there's a bit, the finale itself is a little, the finale itself is so intense, it's almost kind of in bad taste, just a bit. Like, I was sitting there and it's like, whoa. Uh, and it's, it takes like this kid, it takes the, it's kid show premise and just does like the absolute darkest things you can think of. Well, okay, maybe not quite like a Serbian film darkest things, but it kind of approaches that, yeah. Uh, so, well, most of the main, the main characters, like, that are kind of our hero characters, like, they're all pretty likable. Uh, there are quite a few of the people who do end up, uh, well, the people that, a lot of the people that the banana splits get, when you're introduced to them, it's like, wow, what a jerk. And you almost kind of, it's like, yeah, get him, robots. But uh, a few of them, it's like, oh, well, okay, they're not so bad. Oh my god, why did they have to die like that? Uh, but unlike Sleepaway Camp 2, that kind of does a similar sort of... It has sort of a similar feel as what, like, the, mer the death scenes in this did. Uh, unlike Sleepaway Camp 2, like, this still stays fun. Like, I, I hate Sleepaway Camp 2, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's just what the... A lot of this reminded me of, uh, and the director uh, even said it's like, oh yeah, I'm a big fan of like all the old horror movies, and it's like, yeah, it really shows. Like you can really see those sensibilities in a lot of the scenes in here. Uh, like even when the banana splits like aren't doing anything, like when they're not you know, stabbing somebody or choking them out, uh, like the, just the designs themselves are so creepy. Like somebody like says something rude to them as they're like walking off stage, and they all like. It's, like, there there were quite a few moments where it's just, robot looks into the camera, and I kind of like, mm. so, uh, I think some people sort of speculated that this may have been some kind of dry run for, like, a Five Nights at Freddy's kind of movie, and nailed it. <laughs> so, like, I think if there ever actually does get to be a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, this is probably a really good template to follow. Or, if that movie never exists and you like Five, Night at Fre Five, Five Nights at Freddy's, just watch this. Uh, unless you're, you know, like, a little kid. Don't, don't, don't see this if you're a little kid. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, like, the effects, uh, the effects themselves are really convincing, too. Like, there's a lot of, I think there's some of, like, the nice, nicest, like, organs and viscera, like, I've ever seen. Like, if you can, if you can impress me with your effects, it's like, you know, that's how you know you did a good job. And the big set piece kill comes in, I think, a little over half, a little under halfway through. Like, you'll, you'll remember that. Uh, talking effects wise, so, the banana splits actually are, like, portrayed by people in suits, uh, despite you know, them being animatronic. Uh, and the suit work is really good. Like, you are pretty thoroughly convinced that you're seeing, like, these stiff animatronic robots. Uh, I think kind of maybe my one gripe with how they did, how they kind of conveyed that, though, is whenever they move, there's, like, a loud hydraulic, like, like stereotype robotic sound. Uh, which I think they could have at least, like, you know, maybe turned the volume on that down a little bit, because there are a couple times where it gets a little, uh, distracting. Uh, like, there's a scene where one robot's, like, heart gets torn out, and it makes, like, heartbeat sounds. Like, you know, maybe make it more metallic or something? Like, that was, that was kind of my only real problem with this, was just a couple of, like, Huh, why is that sound there? Or, huh, why is that so loud? Uh, but those are pretty minor gripes. But uh, anyway, I guess kind of just getting back to the pacing. So after the robots really start their rampage, like, the movie picks up and it doesn't really, like, slow down. Like, there are a couple moments where, you know, characters are like, hey, where is everybody? 
and you get like a couple breathers and then it just goes right into like a really dark nasty like set piece of killings again and uh like i guess also still a bit of a spoiler like the people that you really want to see get hurt you will not be let down <laughs> um but yeah it's uh it's it's hard to just not gush praise for it though uh because it's it moves fast you don't get bored and something interesting is always happening so uh i would recommend this so in terms of i'm kind of following our podcasts uh, i'm on inside movies galore if you're watching me you probably know that and so i'm kind of trying to do a, a very condensed version of our show so uh moving on to the music uh so I didn't really notice a whole lot of music in here, except for, like, the Banana Blitz theme, which is like, tra-la-la. Um, and, man, it is really creepy, yet also really catchy at the same time. Like, it's got this, like, really cool duality to it, which really was the whole point of this. Is it's like, oh, yeah, it's a kid's show. Look at these kids' characters. You know, kids' characters are kind of inherently creepy, aren't they? Let's do something with that. And then it's like, wow. Wow. This was proven so right uh but other than that i didn't necessarily notice a whole lot of score uh although what's there is good like i've some people who do the music for movies have said you know if you notice the music you're not watching the movie and i think there are some titles where that's more of a valid there's some movies where the music is, like, super important to, like, the plot and setting the mood and everything, but and the music is good enough that you still notice it. Uh, whereas, I think this is one of the movies where, you know, the music fits into the movie to where you don't notice it. So, that's how I would evaluate that. So, I'm trying to think of what my favorite thing in here was. Uh, I think my favorite part is probably, like, the finale. Which is just so bonkers. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> uh, the final kind of battle with the with two of the robots, though, with two of the banana splits, is a little... Uh, they seem to go down kind of quick, I guess. Uh, is maybe the only part I don't like about the finale. Which also has really dark stuff in there too like i mean i know i've said that a few times but i don't want you to be too surprised you know uh like i could maybe do another video or with any luck uh an actual podcast episode with my friends who've seen this and we can just like go over everything uh but this is meant to be a quick review so but uh yeah oh it was just so good and lived up to all my expectations and then moving on to what the physical release is like. So, it comes with a slipcover, which always looks nice on the shelf. Uh, also, interesting thing. Uh, same production company as Critters Attack, which a lot of people... <sighs> I like Critters Attack. I enjoyed Critters Attack. Like, I just... Critters 4, I just thought was... Such a low bar. I... Anything. Anything better than Critters 4. But I liked Critters Attack, and I liked this production company and what they did with that. And... So, they also did this movie, and they did a great job, and I really want to see more projects from them. So, that felt worth commenting on. Uh, just because... You know, it's like... I think... I don't know if they shot this, like, before or after Critters Attack, but it was almost like they had kind of learned stuff from Critters Attack. So, if Critters Attack was, like, their first release and this is their second, it's like, wow, really ramping it up, guys. So, uh, because I know not, not a lot of people, at least that I saw, were fans of Critters Attack, but I was really happy with it, so maybe I'm just too easygoing. But, uh, anyway, so, uh, it's a combo pack, which, uh, 
the Blu-ray is actually still in my player since I decided to just do this as fast as I could. And so they're not uh, they're not like the fanciest discs, but yeah, like I don't really care about disc art all that much most of the time. So, and this actually does have some extras. Like, they're short. And this is one of those movies where I actually do want to know more about like, how it was made and, like, how, how it was written and just the conceptualization. Uh, and so we at least got some of that. So, again, though, they are pretty short. So our first one is The Banana Splits Behind the Horror, which is just kind of a... It's like a nine-minute featurette talking about, you know, kind of, it's like... A, well, what I just said, you know, conceptualization, you know, how do we do this? You know, what is it about the banana splits that made them creepy? Like somebody used the comp used the phrase acid trip for looking for watching like the original 70s like banana splits footage and they had a few clips and I was like, yeah. Yeah, acid trip. <laughs> uh, like I've never done it, but you know, you hear jokes all the time and stories. Uh, anyway, so the next and the next feature was Tear on Set, which is just, you know, well, it's about the sets. It's like seven minutes about the sets. Uh, the sets were really nice on this too. So apparently they still they had access to I guess one standing set from the Banana Split show, like the actual show, uh, or at least that's the impression they gave. So, like, they has, it has this, like, whole trippy, like, 70s art deco thing going on. And it really looks, you know, it really looks accurate to that period. Uh, even if it's not actually the real set. Uh, the set's also included, like, this, this really creepy, like, boiler rooms and tunnels. Like, that was, that was kind of a fun surprise. Uh, but, yeah, that was actually a really enjoyable feature, too. Like, I had to, to make sure I remembered enough, like, I watched them twice. Which was easy to do because they were short, uh, and I just kind of wish there had been more. There had been more to learn on this. Like it was, it was good. Uh, one thing that they said was nice about shooting this was because a lot of the set is a soundstage. Then they can just put their actual equipment kind of wherever. It's like, oh, you don't have to have your cables, you know, hidden over here. It's just like, yeah, just run them through, uh, and it'll be part of the set dressing. So which is. Kind of ingenious. Uh, filmed in South Africa, which I'm I'm kind of wondering if South Africa is like a place for like new productions at this point. Cause I know that uh, these blue ribbon people like are out of are from South Africa. Well, the company I'm assuming is from South Africa uh, because it's at the end of all their work. But it was actually kind of difficult to find information on them because. They have this really elaborate, uh, like, production trailer. You know, the thing at the end where it's, like, you know, logo or maybe, like, a really short skip. They, ha they have this really fancy claymation one, and it was like, I've seen this before. Oh, yeah, Critters Attack. So I'd kind of like to know more about them and, of course, see more stuff from them. And then I think the thing I enjoyed the most was uh, Breaking News, The Banana Splits Massacre, which is, like, a two-minute kind of mock-up news report that sort of functions as a bit of an epilogue to the movie. And it's like, you know, terror on the set as, you know, hundreds of bodies, which, yeah, I, I don't know about hundreds, but a lot. Uh, <laughs> and it was just kind of like a fun, like, bookend to this. Like, I almost wonder if we could get, like, a banana splits too, because I'm not going to spoil the ending, but there is a real interesting twist that they do with uh, one of the characters... That sort of makes me wonder. But anyway, uh, I think I've probably gone on too long, so uh, pick this up from Best Buy for 10 bucks uh, this week or whenever it's on sale if you can. And uh, check it out on Sci Fi uh, when it airs on October 12th, 2019. Just in case somebody's watching this in the future. But, uh, yeah, so, I guess in summation, you know, definitely worth 10 bucks. Quick, quick moving story, you know, it's 90 minutes long, so, you know, you won't get, you won't get bored, 
really nasty kills, really good effects, and, you know, it's a fun time. Just maybe, uh, maybe don't let your kids watch it. Uh, cause there is some really, like, I mean, there are kids in the movie because, you know, they need an audience. And there are some things that's like, wow, these kids are going to be permanently traumatized from this. So, uh, it's, it's pretty fucked up. But, hey, you know, it's a great movie. And uh, I hope everybody else enjoys it too. And that I didn't talk too much. So, you know, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll hopefully have more reviews for you guys soon. So, somebody sent me Bad CGI Sharks. That's actually the name of it. And as soon as I can sit down and watch it, we'll get on and do another one of these. And hopefully I can be a bit more succinct. So, bye everybody.